What's happening guys, Chris here, taking a look at another Overwatch character today. In this video, I'll be putting Junkrat under the spotlight, going over tactics, strategies and those abilities, and how to use them all effectively. We have a generally average amount of health of 200, Junkrat is a defensive player best suited for guarding objectives, cutting off paths and denying access to specific routes. His abilities cater more so for defensive playstyles, as they can be tricky to use against hostiles close by, and pretty hard to be accurate with, as his abilities are more centred around creating dangerous spaces to travel through, instead of attacking opponents head on. And so Junkrat has been given a difficulty rating of 2 stars to reflect this lack of accuracy and specific advantages. So after an attack in Australia caused the detonation of a fusion core and left the surrounding area highly radiated and littered with debris, a group of survivors called Junkers were left behind. The Junkers scavenged the wasteland for metal and components and created their own cutthroat gang. Junkrat was one of these, driven by madness by the radiation and consumed by his obsession with explosives and anarchy. After finding some very valuable treasure amongst the ruins, he became a huge target for bounty hunters and opposing gang members. Junkrat decided to hire a personal bodyguard, Roadhog, in exchange for half of his profits, only for both of them to abandon the outback and go on a crime spree around the world, leaving chaos and destruction in their wake. Anyway, taking a look at those weapons and abilities, Junkrat's primary way to deal the damage is by using his Frag Launcher. This contraption launches explosive grenades through the air over distance, with each explosive detonating whenever they touch an opponent, or after a short period of time. The grenades are fired at a fairly slow velocity when compared with other Overwatch projectiles and arc slightly dropping down over distance. This makes it quite difficult to land direct hits on targets accurately at most ranges, though whenever you do land a direct hit it'll deal 120 damage, knocking out a nice chunk of health. Down to the way your grenades fly through the air, it's often more effective going for indirect hits on smaller targets that are harder to hit, as you're more likely to cause some damage from the splash of the blast. The splash damage can deal up to 80 within a 2 meter radius. The closer your target is to the grenade when it goes off, the higher the damage. And although it might not be as effective as actually landing your shot onto your target, it's usually a lot easier to flood areas with your explosives, affecting anyone in said area at the time. Just beware of using the frag launcher at very close ranges, as the explosions can cause up to 40 self damage. The frag launcher holds 5 grenades at a time before the need to reload, which is more than enough to fill a space with explosives, and cause significant damage to anyone nearby to them. Being a defensive character, the frag launcher is great for cutting off routes and preventing enemies from taking objectives, denying access to areas and generally spamming access points with grenades, making them dangerous to advance through. Although a lot of your shots won't directly harm anyone when fired towards these routes and areas, they will deter enemies from moving through them, and make it much harder to advance forwards and go for that objective. Don't be afraid to go crazy and spam grenades along popular travel routes, as even though you might not be hitting anyone, you're still helping to push players back, preventing hostiles from going where they need to go. Each bomb will bounce a total of 3 times before detonating, and at any moment that they make contact with an enemy player, they'll explode causing maximum damage. They'll still explode upon contact after bouncing, so keep this in mind and instead of going for direct hits all the time, try bouncing the grenades off the floor, walls and ceiling to hit them if it's easier. Bouncing them off walls and around corners can be useful for taking on enemies from a safe place out of harm's way, as you'll be out of sight and out of anyone's firing line. Also, it's usually more effective to aim lower and bounce the bombs along the floor towards targets in front of you beyond closer ranges, as bombs are less likely to go over your opponent's head and more likely to be ran into at lower angles. The frag launcher can be very effective in small rooms and corridors, with the bombs being harder to avoid in smaller spaces. Plus, they're devastating against tank characters, down to them having bigger hitboxes, and with each grenade dealing so much damage on contact. It's also usually best to reach higher vantage points before attacking too, as you're going to be at a huge disadvantage against targets above you. Farrah can be a huge problem for Junkrat when she's airborne, so it's often best to retreat from a battle against her or anyone high up, unless they're moving in a very predictable way, or if you can bounce those bombs off any walls nearby at them. A useful tool that Junkrat can use comes in the form of another explosive based ability, called the Concussion Mine. This allows you to throw and place down a homemade mine that can be manually detonated, blowing up enemies nearby, causing damage and sending them flying through the air. Each mine has a 3 meter splash radius and causes a maximum of 120 damage, though the mine won't cause any self damage and can be used on yourself to get a boost into the air or reach higher areas, and even travel quicker towards objective points when placed behind yourself when detonated. 
the mine can only be tossed over a short distance, but it's a much better alternative when attacking enemies close by than the frag launcher. The knockback effect will push a nearby opponent away from you. The mine can be detonated midair to explode right in their face, plus it's not going to deal any self damage either. This knockback effect can be used to throw enemies into bottomless pits for easy kills, and is often best used in closer range engagements for a rapid way to push people away and deal damage. Though make sure you're not standing in front of one of those pits, as the explosion could push you backwards into it just as easily. The mines can be placed down and stuck to surfaces to create traps, and harm players unexpectedly as they walk through a door, or enter an area. Though they can be destroyed by enemies if shot at, causing no explosion or damage. But other than a quick and easy way to blast health away, they're also useful for traversing the map, giving the concussion mines a variety of different functions. Next up is Junkrat's passive ability called Total Mayhem, which automatically drops 5 live grenades upon death, with each dealing 60 damage. The explosions don't have a very big radius, and the grenades land close to each other, making the area of damage quite small. But if an opponent close by walks over your dead body just after they've killed you, the bombs in total can deal up to 300 damage, which is usually enough to kill, and bring them down with you. If you know you're about to die, running towards the target in close quarters can sometimes grant you an easy kill, with those bombs falling down afterwards upon death. But most smart Overwatch players will know to avoid Junk Rat once he's down, but it still might catch a lot of players off guard, especially if you're in a small space or at a congested objective point when you die. Now, although you can throw down manually detonated traps in the form of the Concussion Mine, Junk Rat can also lob down a steel trap that automatically activates whenever an enemy runs over it. The trap itself deals 80 damage, so it's enough to kill anyone with a low amount of health straight away, but its main purpose is to contain a target, keeping them still for about 3 seconds, and in that time they're highly vulnerable, and can be finished off with your other weapons and abilities much more easily. Unable to avoid your attacks, the trapped enemies can still shoot their primary weapon back, but can't use any abilities, and if you're close by, you can fire a grenade from the frag launcher, or chuck a concussion mine right at them whilst they're immobilised dealing 120 damage, total into 200 when combined with the damage from the trap, and this is usually enough to kill most players with normal amounts of health. To enemy players, the trap will appear to be submerged slightly under the floor, so its location isn't downright obvious, though it'll look like it's sitting on top of the surface from your point of view. The trap can still be seen though by enemies, and shot at to be destroyed, so it's usually best to plant them around corners and out of clear line of sight and in narrow walkways to maximise the chances of someone walking through them. When a trap has been destroyed, you'll be notified, so it can be used as an alarm to alert you of enemy presence advancing through an area. When taking on an enemy up close, as a last ditch effort, you can chuck a trap down towards someone nearby, and sometimes get them as they strafe around, stopping them in their tracks and making it easy for you to kill them. But anyway, that nicely leads me over to Junk Rat's ultimate ability, the Rip Tire. And this is one of those ultimates that's going to send a lot of enemy players into panic as soon as they see it. It's basically a giant tyre that can be controlled and manually detonated to cause up to 600 damage, to anyone caught within a 10 meter radius. When activating the rib tyre, Junk Rat is left immobile and defenceless, making him an easy target to take out, so it's best to use the ability hidden away from enemy sight lines and in a place that someone is less likely to find you, though even if you die, you'll still stay in control of the rib tyre until it's gone. Now when activated, that tyre is going to zoom off forwards and can be steered left and right to travel around. You can also jump using the jump button, and even travel up walls and surfaces by holding down that jump button, just like you can with Hanzo's passive wall climb ability. This is useful for reaching anyone perched on higher platforms, and can often catch them by surprise, as they're probably not going to be expecting a huge exploding tyre to just suddenly appear right in front of them. The tyre can be destroyed, and it only has 100 health, so rather than moving forwards towards a large group of enemies in a straight line, zigzag your movements to make the tyre harder to hit, and even travel around side routes to flank groups of enemies, and take them out unexpectedly. It's often best going for groups of enemies that are close together, and is a great way to prevent hostiles taking over objectives, as you can both kill multiple players at once, and send the others running away in a panic out of harm's distance, and away from that objective. So in conclusion, Junk Rat can be a bit trickier to deal direct damage, and he's more geared up for area denial and making areas more hazardous to travel through. He's great at preventing opponents from advancing forwards easily, but requires a bit more skill to aim and judge the trajectory of your projectiles, to hit enemies directly. If you can predict enemy movements and play with a defensive mindset instead of dashing off into the forefront, 
Junkrat can be a very useful character to pick, and can be very dangerous when used in a smart way. So that's all I've got for you this time guys, thanks for watching, like if you enjoyed, subscribe to see loads more, and I'll see you in the next one.